Well, this week is going to be a good example of what the rest couple of years are going to be like then. Basically. I mean, we have probably about four days off after I leave here today. Um, and then we have about a week left of brush-ups, and then we start on June 2nd for 10 weeks. Prior for, to the first song being released and going huge, did the whole band realize the work ethic needed to pull this off? Um, we knew that this album was probably going to be even more work than the past album because it was like we had to kind of live up to the expectations that people were you know expecting for this album because it's like we did our first album and that one held on strong for about two years or it's going on two years it'll be two years in august and um it's like we we spent almost a year and a half doing this album i mean no one really realizes it but if you put every day back to back recording time, we probably spent about three months on, on this album and that's it. But it was over a whole year and a half worth of time. I mean, we did like six or seven weeks of just recording in Sweden. Then we did a couple of TV shows for the single and shot the video in one day. It was about a 28 hour shoot. And I mean, we just realized that there's gonna be a lot more work involved, but actually there, really hasn't been because the album is kind of doing it for itself mm. and the hype and and the, the music in general is kind of working for itself it's true you have a built-in audience there are people that are going to go and get this uh because they have the first two right. boys albums is, is there any goal to maybe expand that 30 million figure to maybe people to an older audience maybe to more males this this time around i think with this album especially i think we're going to do that because this album has got um have you heard the album yet? Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not I don't your typical. Work, All right, just making sure. <laughs> it's not, this album is really not like the first album in a sense that like the first album is all love songs, you know, or like really happening party songs. This, this album is a little bit more of a growth for us. I mean, songs like Show Me The Meaning, um, The Perfect Fan, Don't Want To Lose You Now, they're a little bit deeper. And then there's like songs like Don't Want You Back, which is my favorite song on the album, which is the complete opposite of like a typical Backstreet Boys record. It's more like the angry side of us, you know, saying that you're in, a, in some kind of relationship with a girl and she just totally disses you and you just don't want her back. You just say, the heck with you. You're, you're out of my life for good. But it's like, I think vocally, this was a more challenging album. And on top of that, there were songs written and produced by us, which is really, a growth and hopefully we'll gain a whole lot more respect from critics especially and people in this industry you know other you know artists and such so i think this this album will hopefully knock on wood will do better than the you know last two albums i think it will even though brian co-wrote uh larger than life and perfect fan i would imagine those are sentiments the whole band shares yeah i mean we all like on it's it's got to be you brian and i did pretty much most of the vocal arrangement on that song and um brian co-wrote larger than life and he co-wrote i'll be the one and he wrote the perfect fan about a year and a half ago uh kevin wrote back to your heart in like two hours when he i mean kevin flew out to alabama started playing the piano over at gary baker's house and gary sat down started playing his you know guitar and within two hours the song was written and i mean I don't know, it's weird. It's like we had a lot more say on this album, which is good, which makes this a whole lot more personal of an album and makes it more, I think, of a Backstreet Boys record. Well, there's a lot of introspection going on with those two songs in particular. You know, Brian was obviously thinking something before he mm -hmm. helped put the pen to paper. Uh, has the past year or a couple years been that way for you? Like, there's um, a lot of thinking going on, a lot, taking stock and a lot of we things? We had a, I mean, this past year has been basically the Rolling Stone issue hit it on the head i mean it was kind of a real abrupt title but it's true it, this has been the backstreet boys year in hell because we had deaths in some of our families how we lost his sister um dennis brian pop. dennis pop brian and kevin lost their grandfather brian had surgery so it's like this past year is we, we had trouble with our record company we had trouble with our management now we have new management new album a whole new outlook on everything and we have a better a way better attitude now, a way better, a whole lot more positive. We're, we're, we're finally comfortable and we're happy. And we can go on stage and just sing and dance and just do our job and not have to worry about the business stuff going on behind us because we have an incredible management team that is doing it for us.
ideally that's what it's all about is that, that comfort level exactly and we I mean for this past year we'd have to like 10 minutes before a show sit down and have a meeting about finances or a meeting about this or me and it, it just stresses you out yeah I mean I, I, I don't want to go on stage thinking about you know firing somebody or doing this or hiring somebody or production or this and that I just want to get up on stage and sing and that's it you know the shit that went down with management old management mm -hmm. how did that affect the dynamics of the group did it bring you guys closer together at all definitely I mean we had to we we were going through a point in time probably for about eight months where, where, we, where we basically had no management we were doing it ourselves and I mean it was difficult because we're not we're not managers I mean we're artists we have we have no clue what the hell we're doing you know when it goes when it comes to that you know promotion stuff traveling touring booking shows booking tickets I mean all these all these kind of things that is not really our job you know but we we got through it it was pretty pretty rough but we made it and then we finally sat down in Las Vegas and met with geez probably 10 to 15 management companies just one after another and the firm just really we just clicked I mean they they were young guys they were close to our age and they have they just have that 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 like fire and that drive to, to just want to help us and they've done an incredible job so far I, I'm, I'm not going to dwell on the litigation stuff involved mm -hmm. with Lewis Perlman or anything like that. There was a lot of money the boys didn't see, which was rightfully theirs. Right. It's a given. This is all stuff part of the, this is all part of the business that fans aren't aware of. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I talk to people all the time that says, "Oh, you know, I want to get into the business." I'm looking at them. And I'm going, you know what? It's more than standing up on. That's why this is called the music business because. I mean, we we did a show with the, the we didn't actually do the show with them, but we went and saw the uh, Temptations probably about two years ago, and um, we, we, all of us went backstage and we talked to a couple of the guys, and one of the guys turned to us and said, you know what, you guys, I'm just going to give you a little bit of advice. He's like, you, you realize that this is called the music business. He's like, don't forget that while you're on stage doing your music, your business can be walking out the door behind you. And it's very true. I mean, and, and, and your, your business could be totally screwing you over behind you while you're on stage doing the music. And it's true. But I mean, nobody really knows what the heck we went through for a year, but we've all grown up a lot in the last year and we've all matured and became businessmen. We've been kind of forced to, you know, but it's definitely beneficial to us because now we understand things in every department better. You know, we're not real businessmen or managers or anything like that or attorneys, but we're, but we understand more now, and we're not getting the wool pull over our eyes anymore. What, what won't kill you will make you stronger. Um, I think the fact that the five of us had to really come together as a group and stand up for what we wanted, and instead of like two of us wanting this and three of us wanting that, or one of us wanting this and four of us wanting that, five of us came together as a, as a team and just said, this is what we want, and we we got it. It took us a while to get it, but now we have it. And like I said, now we all go on stage and we're happy to get back on stage. And we're not worrying about anything. We're up there just doing what we do best. And it's so much easier. I gotta wrap this up quickly, but just before uh, you head out, lift the head up, just for the ladies, just for the eyes. There you go. Hello.